YouTube and welcome to another walkthrough by Day 2.0. It's been a while since I've done one of these. Uh, I think the last one was February 2012, so it's been a few years. Um, wow, nearly four years. Holy crap. But I've decided the next uploads I'm going to upload to YouTube are going to be walkthroughs. So the first image I've decided to do for this new set of walkthroughs I've decided to upload is my most recent picture and it's called Far Away. It was inspired by Far Away, the song by Nickelback. It's portraying the fact that you can have such emotional connections with people although they're not physically there, embracing the gloriousness that is the internet. So that is the premise behind the picture. It has a deeper meaning to me personally but for the audience that I wish to see the image that is more or less what I'm trying to portray. Here I'm just line arting. Uh, I think this is the first time I've done a walkthrough where I'm explaining my um, Lazy Nesame Pro plugin um, because generally I've mentioned it in my uh, time lapses but I've not actually explained really what it is. Basically it's more or less a stabiliser for Photoshop but it costs money but it has a lot of other features and I mess around with it later on in the video. I have a play with the features in it. So there's so many it's a bit frightening to actually have a play so I don't tend to mess with it I just do what I need to do and be done with it. Speaking of which, here it is! Here I am messing with features. It's going to come up in a minute. Here we are! I'm messing around with it. So I made the first two circles with it and then I collapsed it in. I didn't quite know what I was doing. I was just having a bit of a play and then I realised I'm just going to use the ellipse tool and uh, stroke the ellipse line because it's, it's easier and less confusing than using the lazy Nazumi for that. But generally it is really helpful. This picture took me probably about five hours to sketch because I couldn't get it right. I knew the image I wanted in my head. I was having a difficult time portraying that on paper. Um, thankfully, I was live streaming at the time. So my marvelous streamers uh, threw red lines at me to help me with the expressions and stuff. So that actually really helped. But also, because I was live streaming, I lagged a lot when doing this because I was recording and streaming and normally it's not a problem, but for some reason my computer had a bit of a cry that day, I don't know why. Um, so you'll notice whenever I do line art, um, I'll have like big thick lines show up or big dots show up, that's because it's lag, which is quite annoying. So the majority of this image is drawn offline because I just got really tired of having to keep redoing line art strokes because of the lag caused by streaming and recording. I use Bandicam to record, for those wondering. I noticed that the necks were too short. I'm not very good at drawing zoomed in poses. Like I'm good at drawing a headshot, I'm, I'm good at drawing full bodies, but whenever I have to draw like a set angle or focused in on a portion or something, I can't get the anatomy right. So when I left it and came back the next day, I noticed that the neck wasn't long enough. So I just, I just did just then, I extended the neck. And then here's where you probably notice lag a bit more, because there's a lot more parts where the line art's a bit blotchy in places and a bit awkward. This muzzle looked really weird to me for some reason. I like the expression but the style was quite a bit different to what I normally draw like so I couldn't understand why. I think I more or less sorted it for the end. I worked out what it was later on but at this point it bugged me. It was too pointed and it came across a little bit like, I don't know, sinister because it was pointy at the end. Now, 
This guy's expression was the hardest to draw because he kept coming across worried. I wanted him to have um, a kind of content, happy smirk, like a smile, but he kept coming across worried or concerned. That's what my streamers were mainly redlining when I was streaming this. So then we established the facial expression, like the mouth movements, what went wrong there. And then we also worked out that a singular line in the eyebrow fluff is what made it look even worse like it was worried, which was really odd to me. Kind of drawing a different style to like fluff and stuff, N not so much for this, but inside the ears I've adapted like a different kind of style for that. There we go, just seen a big thick line there. See my line art, as I say, it's, if you actually watch me do it live, it's so boring. I find it a bit funny when I do, when I record speed paints and edit speed paints because you can physically see that when I speed it up times four, because Sony Vegas can only speed up by times four, it looks like real time because that's how slow I am when I draw. So when I speed it up times four, it plays as if it's real time. Which is annoying to me really, because it's like I wish I could draw that fast. Unfortunately I can't. I use multiple layers to overlay uh, the line arts so I can get a natural curve without restricting myself. Because if you try to draw a curved tuff of fur, having to worry about not going over another curve of another line because you're going to ruin it, you, it won't be as natural, it'll be quite rigid, so I tend to do that. Here's the headphone wire. It's a little bit, I noticed how thick it was when I was drawing this. It's generally quite thick so you can see it, because it's quite a statement piece in a lot of artwork. But um, I didn't quite realise how thick it was. Well, like, when you actually look at your own headphone wires, your headphone wires aren't actually that thick. So I might adapt that later on. Colouring! I like colouring, but this was a really hard task with the stream lag. Because yes, I am still streaming, I'm fairly sure at this point. And I have it on a um, default round brush, the opacity and flow set to pen pressure. And I also change the spacing down to one because then you don't get the weird kind of circly blotchiness with lines sometimes. On Rayra, on her markings, she has three sort of speckled stripes. But for some reason, I can't draw them very well. Because this canvas size is huge, it's like 4,000 by 4,000 something, right? So whenever I tried to draw the fluffy stripes, they came across two, like, lines. They weren't fluffy enough, they were just literal stripes. And that's not how our markings go, so I gave up with that after, I don't know, seven attempts to draw it right, I decided to take a break. I wasn't quite sure if the ear was in the right place. It looked a bit too set back to me, like if he was looking forward his ears would be too far apart. But then I couldn't work out where to put it right. And I where to put it to make it look right, so I just left it how it was. When doing the face markings I switched it over to a hard brush. Because the face markings aren't really that fluffy. It's just her the longer bits of fur where I make it fluffy. Because that's where the markings would be fluffy. <laughs> on the longer floof. Here's where the Lazy Nazami plugin worked. It had a setting on it called Weighted, and it makes the beginning of the line and the end of the line pointed, like tapered. And it really helped when drawing those markings because it solved my issue. Because whenever I use the flow, I draw the lines, but the beginning of the line would be really thick, and so my fluffy markings wouldn't be fluffy. 
Here's a character who I've not drawn before or even designed yet. It's a little bit darker now after I finished it. So that's what I do later on. I edit it in the um, levels and stuff to make him darker. I didn't worry too much about the body markings because I had an idea what I was going to do for that part of him so I figured there's no point being that detailed because you're not going to see it. I don't know why I did rough shading there because I always erase it. I don't know what it is. I'm not very good at picking into shading. Um, I always just block it out to see if it looks right and then erase it and draw it properly. I don't know why. I can't I can't just pick into it for some reason. Well not very well anyways. Shading! My shading style's changed quite drastically since I've used this plugin. Because it doesn't allow for curves very easy, so it's quite rigid and straight. Well, kind of. It's a bit awkward. I don't quite know how to predict it yet. Because sometimes I'll draw a line and it'll be thick. And sometimes I'll draw a line that'll be thin. I'm not sure if it's speed. I'm not sure if it's direction. Like that, that line there on the ear was meant to be like a thick line, but it came out really thin. Like, for example, I don't know how to solve that. So I'm still, although I've used it for a while, I'm still learning with it. But the settings are so, there's so many and it's so confusing that I don't know where to start in order to look. Here I'm drawing a lasso around the uh, head fluff so I can shade the chest without interrupting the head fluff and without using another layer. It takes a bit of time to go around it properly with a lasso tool but it's worth it in the end because you don't disrupt the shading you've just spent a good while painting in or drawing in rather than not painting. I think the only shading that I have in this image is the face cheek fluff and the chest fluff for some reason. There I am just correcting some of the uh, markings that didn't point right. They kind of curved a bit weird on the side of it. I don't know why it did that but it just did. Second uh, layer of shading same I think it's the same opacity and stuff on multiply I think it's 50% something like that I just drew it in it again and just erased it with the brush mode I think I used the weighted brush mode rather than the massive brush mode this time well some some of it some of it I just changed it back to the um subtle brush mode default which is what I use for line lighting which is basically where it doesn't taper your lines but it smooths them out my hand doesn't do it anyway I've got quite a steady hand Here I am, just shading in the wire, because it literally is a wire, so it will have a shade to it. Because I could have left it, you can't, probably can't even tell, but it's one of those things that I do that makes me happy inside, knowing that I've added it in. Shading the headphones, I coloured them a second ago as well. Technically she wears headphones, not headset, but since the headphones are based around my headset, I just add a headset microphone whenever I use it for a headset. Here I'm shading under it as well, making sure to catch the shadows in the right spot. Obviously it's not going to be connected touching the head all the way down, so that's where the shading's different distances away from the face. And here I am messing around with the um, colours of the character to make him darker, because he wasn't quite as dark as I wanted him to be in the end. So I was just messing around with layer modes and stuff. Oh, you saw a little snippet of a... Uh, the full body reference of a little idea I did of Crow. Shading! Right! Shading Crow. Only really his face gets shaded. I do shade his body, but as I say, I wasn't really detailing that too much because you wouldn't really see it with the effects I'm going to add in later on. But his cheek fluff came out in a quite different style to what I'd normally use. I don't really know what happened. Not that I'm complaining, I quite like how it looks. 
But it's gave me the idea that perhaps if I completely shaded the character in complete shade and just picked at it, it gives the element of like a painting style. I edited this a little bit because it's um it pointed in a weird way, it curved against itself in some places. So I um messed around with that to make it look a bit more natural. See what I mean? Look, it looks like if I did that all over the body, it'd be quite an interesting style to shade. Like a cell shade, but all the way over. I don't know how, it's the sort of thing where I don't know how I'd do it on like short hair, so like the muzzle, or like paws and stuff, like how would I gradually build that in to where it flows right together. There we go, same tactic there, just filling it in again and just picking at it with um, the eraser set to weighted as well. Adding the wire over the top and then adding the wire glow onto both the characters. And then adding glow to the headset, because obviously it's, it's going to be hitting the headset as well. And I remember to make sure to keep in mind the distance. So the closer it was to the body, the more prominent the uh, highlights were. Highlighted um, the line art, by locking the line art. I don't lock the line art anymore, I just add a clipping mask over the line art, because then it's easy to edit. Right, here I'm using something different. I've discovered a technique to where you can fill your background really easily with a pattern you want. What you do is you make a new document, whatever size you want it to be, and then you put your pattern in there. You highlight it like you would to make a new brush. You go to edit, and rather than going to define brush preset, you go to define pattern, and then in your document you want to use it on, you make a new layer. You go to edit, fill, it'll be a drop down box, and it'll be like pattern, gradient, blah, blah, blah. You click pattern, then you click the pattern you want to use and click OK and it fills it. Which is really handy for me because it saved me a lot of time when drawing this grid because I want to give the element of a computer screen or technology, you know? Like electronic-y sort of vibe to it. That's what I wanted to give with this. It was a really easy way to do that rather than having to do each individual line. Here I am adding in a load of binary code in like computer style text. I wanted to put a secret message in binary code like maybe hinting at the title, so maybe write far away in binary code or something like that. But upon googling binary code, my brain melted with confusion, so I just button mashed the one and the zero a couple of times. Adding glows to each one, this took a while and it was very tedious. I don't quite know how many layers there were in the end, but there was a few. And then I blurred it as well, to give the element of code was passing through a computer, like it was always on the move and functioning and working at something. I'm shading the eyes here, uh, using the blue from the glow of the wires to be the blue of the highlight in the eyes. Blue whiskers as well, because they'd catch the light, so they wouldn't be white in this. Added another highlight over the character, because I didn't think it was defined enough. I tried to add a highlight to Rayra herself, but with her colour being brown, it didn't quite work out very well adding a highlight to her. And plus I thought, well, she's not in the computer, maybe that's something I can use as an excuse to not have highlighted her. The fact that she's not the one in the computer being affected by the light the most, she's just wearing the headset in the real world, does that make sense? Because her highlights currently are based on her wire, it's not based on the background, anything like that. I wanted a glitch effect for his body, so he was like phasing in. Uh, not so much for a screen, but like being materialised. But then whenever I tried to do the glitching effect, I think it didn't work quite well because the canvas size was so huge. It's the problem with working in the big canvases that a lot of filters and stuff have a limitation and the bigger you get in canvas size, less effect that has. So this is the problem I ran into when trying to do this glitch effect. 
It was something to do with stalk and wave and you could like make it kind of jitter and stuff and it worked a little bit but not quite as much as I wanted to so I ended up using my own method of glitching and erasing the body at different transparencies. That's what I ended up doing in the end. And then I also discovered that I had a brush. Conveniently it was a squared rectangle brush and I used that to glitch the edges out more. And then I duplicated him and changed the layer on him and then made him like a blue and then glitched that out again. Kind of gives the impression it's coming from the binary code in a way. I thought it'd be a cool idea to have binary code overlapping him in some places so it gives the element as well that it's coming from the binary code and not just in front of a screen. And then I realised that the wire could be wrapping in as well. Which I also decided to glitch, wherever the wire comes into contact with the binary code, it's glitching as well, like static. You can't really see it too well, not as well as I'd hoped you'd see it anyways. So, here we are with the final image. It's not got a proper background, like I would normally do walkthroughs for, but I thought it was something quite interesting and something a bit more light-hearted and easygoing to do a walkthrough on. So I hope this helped you. Feel free to ask questions in the comment section below and I shall answer them and try to help you as best I can. Until then, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!